Actually, let's jump into the Hunter Biden stuff because. Uh, sure. So I don't know if you've been following up to date on all of this because we're getting this slow release of Hunter Biden information, Joe Biden information. But the story is this computer repair guy gets a laptop. Yep. And after a couple months, dude never shows back up. The laptop had Bo Biden Foundation sticker on it or something. He opens it up because now it's, le- it's legally his property. It's been abandoned and he finds a bunch of emails. Apparently, he, con- he, he, he copied the hard drive and then gave it to the FBI, but then heard nothing back. And so then he started getting worried, thinking he was going to get killed and stuff like that. So then he gave it to Rudy Giuliani's lawyer, like, I don't know, I'm going to give it to you. So now there's serious questions about what did the FBI know? Because apparently they received this in December of 2019 when the impeachment inquiries were going on, which led into the impeachment hearing. And this was all based on Donald Trump's phone call with, uh, you know, the I think it was, was it the was it the president or prime minister of Ukraine or something Ukraine, like that. Yeah, I think so. Well, it was Ukraine, but the it was the perfect like, phone call. The perfect yes, phone call, indeed. So he said, you know, people are are talking about this video. There was a video, a viral video, where Joe Biden was was laughing about how he ousted this prosecutor. Yeah. And he's like, "Son of a b, gets fired, ha ha, billion dollars." If everyone you don't, laughs. Everyone yeah. laughs. So Trump has his phone call. Probably saw some viral video on the internet. Didn't know much about it and passively was like, yeah, I just uh, I don't know if you know anything about this thing with with Biden I saw. And that was, it was really kind of but they launched this big impeachment thing over it, mm-hmm. which failed. The FBI had this had this hard drive. They had these emails in these emails. We've now learned so far in only, I think, three or four days that one of one of the executives for this company that Trump was asking questions about thanked Hunter Biden for introducing him, giving giving him the opportun- opportunity to meet his dad and spend time with him. Whether whatever that means, you can interpret. The media is trying to claim it didn't mean he actually met him. That's just kind of weird. Spend so, t- I think spend time with him is pretty. I know. I know. I think so, yeah. But maybe it meant Hunter Biden and not Joe. But I don't. I'm not buying it. It's just colloquially. So anyway, look. Yeah. We we now have Tucker, Tucker Carlson last night did a segment where he said one about one month before Joe Biden went and got this prosecutor fired. There were communications from this company about needing to get U.S. officials to intervene on their behalf. And then it was only like a few days before, I guess, this PR company was on a was on a phone call with the White House or something, a a conference call. And then all of a sudden, Joe Biden flies out there, fire this guy or you don't get the money. Yeah. Guy gets fired. The guy who got fired, Victor Shokin, said he signed a sworn affidavit that he was going to investigate the executives of Burisma and the founder of Burisma for corruption and, and various things. But then Joe Biden got him fired. So if that information, if those emails were in the possession of the FBI at a time when Trump was being accused of trying to smear Joe Biden, what was the FBI doing? You know, uh, I mean, I, I, I can't I can't uh, I can't you're even you're guess, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, I, I do think that the I do think that the so people say the deep state and I think that when you use a term like deep state it's such a charged term that it's unhelpful but there is an entrenched bureaucracy of people that work for the government that are unelected that have no desire to get fired they don't want to see their job go away they're regular people doing what to them is fairly mundane work but they don't want their you know, like I said, I would get rid of, you know, get rid of the ATF. Well, people that work at the ATF, they don't want to get rid of the ATF. Right. My mom used to work for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife in Massachusetts. And I told her and her friends right in front of them, just like, I would get rid of this whole building. Y'all are fired. And they were, they were, uh, they were appalled. And my mom was like, my mom was just like, whatever, you know, because she knows my opinion. And, but they were appalled that I would say that. And I understand because, you know, if you've got a job, and, and you've got your livelihood tied up with, with the government, you know, it, it makes sense. But at the same time, you know, these, these people that work for the government have their own interests. And so to think that they wouldn't try to preserve their own jobs and preserve their, their, their power or whatever, I think that's, that's just, that's a little foolish. And to just say, Brave, oh, you're, yeah. You know, oh, it's deep state, and so it's all just crazy conspiracy theory. No, it's not. It's it's realistic to say people that have jobs and families and pensions and all the things that go along with a job, they want to keep those things. That makes perfect sense for sure. But there's there's ideology in there. Sure, yeah. Like I think I think if if these people at the FBI, like Strzok, Lisa Page, yeah. you know, the Russiagate yeah. people, yeah. they hated Trump. Yeah, and and you're right. I agree with you about ideology, and I think that Donald Trump is is 
you know, just throwing rubbing salt in the wound. <laughs> and I honestly, I think that, I think if Donald, if if Barack Obama didn't make fun of Donald Trump at that at that dinner, yeah, he probably wouldn't. <laughs> he probably wouldn't have run if if Barack Obama didn't get on late night TV and clown on Donald Trump. Donald Trump probably wouldn't have won. So you want to complain about something? Complain about Barack Obama doing the mic drop. Seriously? Yeah. Yeah. That's why you got Donald Trump because you clowned him and made a fool of him. Yeah. So, yeah. Exactly. I mean, uh, a lot of people have said Trump wants to be loved, so yeah. he's looking for compromise to yep. get the, the you know the most amount of love possible. And that's uh, I, I hear this a lot when people talk about the bump stock ban that he had these 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 gun control advocates and they were being nice to him, so he was absolutely like, thank yeah. you, oh yeah, well definitely, like you be nice to the guy and the guy yeah. he wants to he wants you to love him. Yeah, I, I agree totally. Yeah. So so we we end up with we have an FBI that has some agents. Now, now one of their lawyers actually got charged. So you, you, you heard about this, right? Didn't they take out a bunch of insurance policies? Too? Yes, I heard about yes. that. FBI agents were taking out liability insurance because they knew if anyone found out about what they were doing to Trump, they yeah. were going to get in trouble. Yeah, that's that's nuts to that's me. Crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> the fact that they took out the insurance policies and and there isn't a ton of journalists trying to snoop around and come up with information about why they were, what were you thinking and, and et cetera, et cetera, is, is proof that the, the media doesn't have very much interest in actually upsetting the apple cart. You know, it's not enough for them to not be journalists. They must actively be anti journalists. Yes. That's how it works. That's, that's kind of the truth. That's, <laughs> that's, how, that's how I see it because when when the Proud Boys got name dropped by Joe Biden, yeah. what did all these journalists tweet out? Yeah. Don't interview the Proud Boys. Don't talk about them. Yeah. All of that. It was just like one person tweeted and then someone would quote it and created this chain of all the journalists being like, we vow not to actually explore who these people are, which is insane because a presidential candidate name dropped them. And one yeah. of them said, stand back and stand by. It's incredible. Kind it's incredible. of important to figure out who he's telling to stand by. Uh, you would think so. But as long as the as long as the the general tone that your normies are going to have about or the attitude that normies have generally about the proud boys is that they're the bad guys they don't want to touch it they don't want anyone to dive in and find out that the proud boys have you know black members and and you know the, the cuban american uh they don't want people to know charge. yeah they don't want people it's to know joke. the truth yeah yeah. It started as like a ridiculous joke based name on the Aladdin cereals. song. Yeah. Name the cereals. Yeah. The naming the cereal things was based off of when someone farts. They can punch you until you name five cereals. Of course. Oh, does. that's what it. And did then you, it turned did, into getting. That's how you got in. Okay. So, do, oh so, uh, do you, ever, you ever play the game doorknobs? No. When so we used to do this in Chicago. If someone farted, yep. Get you have to yell doorknob. safety. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you 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 know that farts coming on you 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 fart with safety, but if you don't, someone yells doorknobs. They start punching you until you touch a doorknob. <laughs> That's the that's the Chicago great. version. In for Ga, for Gavin, it was name five breakfast cereals, okay. and they stopped punching you. And, you <laughs> and so it was clearly all a really dumb joke yeah. that got taken way too far. Yeah. Yeah. But still, you know, I, I always say like if these guys were if when they announced they're doing a rally, if nobody shows up, you know what happens? Nothing happens. They they wander around, they sing the they sing the, the national anthem, they get drunk, and they go home. Yeah, they go to a bar and they drink. That's it. Nothing happens. Yeah. They're just it's just like frat bros going around and chest bumping each other and stuff. Yeah. Antifa shows up, however. So, the, the, you know, we, I'm not going to rehash all that stuff, but the point is the news organizations didn't want anyone to realize they're not a white supremacist group. Like, you, you can criticize them for a lot of things. We had, you know, Enrique on the show, and we, and we, we, you know, we had a bit of back and forth on some issues. But uh, right now, you know, the media had an opportunity, at that time, I should say, the media had, media had an opportunity because Donald Trump said, stand back, stand by. They wanted it to be white supremacy. Yeah. But if they actually interviewed Enrique Tarrio, who's not white, then that would have been bad yeah. because it would have broken the narrative. It ruined it. So then, that, you know, what, what did we see with that, uh, that town hall last night with Savannah Guthrie? She again asks Trump, will you denounce white supremacy? Yeah. And Trump's like, ah, you know what? They told me backstage you were going to ask me this. <laughs> you ask every single time. And she was like, "Aren't you a little? You're a little hesitant." He's like, "No, I'm not. I denounce white supremacy." Yeah, I, you, I've, I've heard Donald Trump say that I denounce white supremacy more times than I've heard any other human being say I denounce white supremacy. <laughs> yeah. I have they, literally, out of all the people that I've ever interacted with in my entire 45 years, I've heard Donald Trump say I denounce white supremacy more than anyone, and he's still asked, "Denounce white supremacy." So, here, here's the bigger picture in all this because we, we, we jump from like the Bidens and out to the media. 
It's the entirety of the establishment. It is. Yeah. Big tech, Twitter, Facebook. This is something, Ian, you probably know a bit about, especially when it comes to like, because you, you moderated for Minds. Yeah. So you've got Twitter and Facebook. Story comes out. They nuked the story completely. The crazy thing was before anything happened, Facebook, this guy, Andy Stone, who worked for the Democrats said, we're reducing its visibility or whatever, or yeah. its reach or something. Yeah. Why are these individuals censoring a story that made Joe Biden look bad? Yeah. Then their, and their excuses kept changing. For Facebook, it was, oh, it's unverified. Yeah. For Twitter, they said, because they didn't publish where the origins were, it's possibly hacked. So they shut it down. Then it was, like, oh, oh, no, they revealed private information. Now they're like, okay, it's actually it's fine now. It was ridiculous. It was all ridiculous, just garbage to, to try to... Uh, you know, cover up the story or, or or limit its its reach. And the thing that's the thing that surprises me the most is is people just kind of bought that and were like, yeah, okay, we're not, we don't, you know, they okay. Don't, this is this, this is the I'm thing. Just like, when that's I, the story. Like what, the Biden stuff isn't as big of a story as you know the the cover up. And now you've got the. Aren't they going to be going? Doesn't Jack have to go to Capitol Hill? So far, it's an invite, I think. It's an invite. Right? Yeah, and no. they always ignore this stuff. That's why I'm like, so So I think Josh Hawley tries. Mm -hmm. You know, he really tries to get to the bottom of the censorship and the manipulation and stuff. But he doesn't have the power. Yeah. It, we're, we're not a country of despots as much as the left wants to claim Trump and the Republicans are fascists. They can't do much. Ridiculous, yeah. So these companies keep getting away with it. Yeah. You know, so I saw, I, I made a post about this. I'm like... I th when, when when Twitter blocked the government the house website house.gov yeah that was wow that was I was like welcome to Black Mirror baby that's yeah. it I'm not even I'm not even gonna be serious about this anymore when the story first came out I was like this is it you know or when they censored the New York Post I'm like they are actively now cheating to help the Democrats win it's, there's, there's no question because when Trump's taxes tax, tax information was released by the New York Times Trump denied it yeah that means the information was not verified. In fact, it was refuted and no one cared. No one when cared. the leaked Melania tapes came out, no, no one, one cared. cared. This information, oh, whoa, 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 whoa gotta, whoa, shut, whoa. It, gotta yeah. shut it down, gotta shut it down. And what do I hear from my lefty friends? But the story is not verified. Yeah. When have you ever asked me to verify any of these stories? Never. Yeah. I can put out a story where it's like Donald Trump smacked a kid in the face and you're gonna be like, wow. I believe it. Then the you orange man is so bad. Oh, can you believe he smacked I a can. kid? I totally can. What what is it about this like I'm not even sure I'm not even convinced it's it's an actual establishment of people as much as it is some kind of weird mind frame where you have a bunch of people that can only f point in a certain direction. So basically I'll put it this way. If the news comes out saying Trump is bad, it's immediately accepted accepted as true. Yep. Demi Lovato is like I'm going to criticize the president even if it hurts my my yeah. career. It's like, <laughs> like oh, it's going to hurt my career. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, like then Taylor Swift come out with a song or something. I love anyway. Taylor Swift. I love her to death. She and does, I, as yeah. much as as much as uh, I disagree with her on politics, I will still consume whatever <laughs> Taylor Swift puts out. <laughs> Didn't you see that? With no shame. No question. Did no you shame. You know that, what, what's that song where it's like? Um, what's it? What's it called? You're you're you're, you're talking too loud. You, you better need to calm down. You need yeah. to calm down. You need to calm down. Yeah. 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 It was like the the music video she put out was a caricature of you know of like hillbilly Republicans in the in the early '90s or something. Yeah. Moran sign and like mm -hmm. being anti LGBT or whatever. And I'm like, Trump was was pro gay marriage yeah. before he became president. Yeah. Like, what year are you looking from? So they got some old guy who's producing the music video. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. We do the show live. Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. So come back to check us out when we go live. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell. And we are also available on all podcast platforms for free. If you want to listen to us there, thanks for hanging out and we will see you all next time.